same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over the sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Second chapter, or second paragraph there, actually it's the third paragraph, verse 8. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp? sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it and when she finds it she calls her friends and neighbors together and says rejoice with me Woo! i found my lost coin i found that hundred dollar bill it was under the carpet and then they laid carpet so i just had to tear up that one little part in the same way i tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner who repents now, part of the reason I'm going to talk about this is, I've said this before, is that in the Church of God, we're big on holiness. We're a holiness church, and I do believe we are called to live a holy life. But we're going to talk about unity in this thing tonight. That was a big thing from the, very early on, right, Betty? Early on, Church of God, holiness and unity. But so many times, churches like us, we spend so much time talking about holiness and how people should act and talk and think and this and do this and do that. We never get around to talking about unity. We cause disunity. But everybody should be exactly like us, look like us, talk like us, think like we think, do everything. Instead of agreeing to disagree. But God loves all. And, and the big thing about Wesleyan theology, Wesleyan holiness theology, Arminian theology, which we are a part of, is that... God wishes that none should perish. He doesn't, there's not Calvinism or Reformed theology, which talks about there's a set that God knows, even though he loves all people, he knows that some people will not choose him, that some are the elect, that is the term, the elect, and there's some will never choose him. In other words, because he's God and he knows all things, he made people, but he made people that won't choose him, that will die in hell. We don't believe that, right? He's willing that none should perish. All right? So God wants everyone to be saved, to come to a loving knowledge of him. But sometimes people will not act like we act, that don't come from a holiness background, or think like we think, or do the same things that we do. And we should not look down upon them, because there's... They are beloved of God just as you are. And once we get over this stuff, we'll see this church full. But we have to get over it. And let me tell you something. I'm going to testify this morning. I can't get over some of it. I'm being honest with you here. I went to a Bible study this Thursday. You can ask Sarah if you don't believe me. That is the Trinity Fellowship. And there's a Trinity Fellowship um, in, it's based in Lafayette, but then Crawfordsville, there's a version. And it's people that have been in trouble with the law, to make a long story short. Either, a lot of them have uh, got mixed up in drugs, but um, most of them have tattoos. There's guys that got facial tattoos and stuff like that. And I've got used to it. You know, have a tattoo on your arm or on your leg or your back or whatever. There's a lot of Christians that have tattoos now. I try to be cool with it, but I was raised in the Church of God. I still can't get over some of it. I'm being honest with you. I joke about getting one. I won't tell you the whole joke because it's really not proper for Sunday morning, but I'll tell you it later. But um, we, there's just something in this background that I have. I see guys with facial tattoos, and I'm like, well, what are you thinking? What are you doing? So I'm number one culprit. Number one looking down upon people. I am not fully redeemed through the flesh yet, okay? I'm redeemed in the spirit by the blood of the lamb, but I'm not redeemed fully in the flesh. So we have to get our whole mindset and attitude, and this is just one attitude I can talk about right now in front of everybody, but what we know, not, not to drink, not to do this, not to do that. In Church of God history, you know, there's a Methodist church, when I've gone to a Methodist church, there's people who have no problem with 
drinking at all. That's not what the sermon is about, and I'm not advocating that we all go out and get bombed watching the Colts game this afternoon. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we have to look past some of our own prejudices. Not Jesus' prejudices. It's stuff that we heard in church going up. But it was a lot of times it was the, the preacher's opinion. They got worked into the doctrine and the teaching. And it wasn't the word of God. And it was our own preferences. We have to get over our own preferences. Because we have a job as the church. And everybody here I pretty much know is a Christian. And we're supposed to bring people in. One of the things we want this unity service to be about. People drive by who are not Christians or not churchgoers. Maybe they went to church when they were a kid. Or went to vacation Bible school. All the, why do you have so many churches? You, have, you hear people say, why do they have all these religions? To them, a Baptist church and church of God will say, oh no, we're, you know, we're denomination. We don't even like the word denomination in the church of God. But, well, they have different religions. Well, to them, we're against one another. Right? God wants us to work together and bring this inner light. In the Orthodox Church, the Greek Orthodox, Romanian Orthodox, one of the big first splits off the Catholic Church in history, if we go back to history, and it was kind of before and kind of after the Lutheran Church broke off from the Catholic Church. But they believe that the inner light will shine so bright that people will be attracted to that inner light. But we have to seek unity. We can't so, so much focus on holiness that we never get around to talking about unity and God uniting us together as one. You know that song, O Church of God, the day of Jubilee is done. So you know what the you know what Jubilee is? Anybody? Anybody know what Jubilee is? It's okay. No? It's 50 years. In the Old Testament, every 50 years, things would come back. Now you'd be called a socialist nowadays. I won't go too much farther and get into politics, but <laughs> 50 years, everything went back to the original landowner. The day of Jubilee in the church of God, God was drawing all his body into one, right? O church of God, the day of Jubilee has gone so bright and glorious for thee. Rejoice, be glad, the shepherd has begun his once divided flock again to gather into one. What that is about is that we believe that the beginnings of the church of God it wasn't supposed to be a denomination. It was a reuniting of the church all together. That God was bringing his church together. I keep, I want to get so animated when I sit down here in front. That's saying, God, God's telling me, get back. Get back. But that's what that's about. That's what the original thought of the church of God was about. It gets lost in a lot of things. That he's calling us together to be one and to put down things that we can agree to disagree about, right? Let's go back to, so I don't go on forever, we'll go back to the scripture. Verse one and two. I'm gonna read a little bit differently, where did I put it? There it is. I've got too many books up here today. Now the tax collectors and sinners we're all gathering around him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the man, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Despite the difficulties of Christ's message, the outcasts of society were drawn to him. While the religious leaders grew more and more determined to kill him, they murmured greatly, their complaining prompted three parables. We'll just get to the first two today. But this was to demonstrate the joy of God over the repentance of sinners. Christ, has not, Christ was not ashamed to be known as a friend of sinners. He was not ashamed to hang out with the Trinity guys, with the people with the facial tattoos, to the people that might have been hanging out at the bar yesterday. They can't because they're in, but you get my point. That we have, I'm not saying that we all have to go hang out at the bar after this during the game. But what I'm saying is, oh, just like when we say be in an attitude of prayer, pray at all time, pray without ceasing, 
always be able in a mindset to go to prayer. You know, that you don't have to have the preacher around to pray. Or that you can even, it doesn't have to be a big prayer. That's another thing. God hears the very essence of our heart. In fact, it says in Romans that we don't even know how we should pray sometimes. But he just hears our groaning. If we just groan towards him and pray out, oh God. You know what the best prayer is? I think I've said that here before. Anybody know what the best prayer is? Help! Just pray it towards God. Verse 3. And then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you have a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Now, personally, honestly, I did not understand this verse growing up. And I don't know if I'm honestly still, if I don't know if I understand it or if I'm okay with it. Or not okay with it exactly but it seems like well then what about the 99 they've been they've been faithful right or moderately faithful why is he leaving the faithful for this one but that's how big God's love is it's not that he doesn't love the 99 he loves we're a part of him <laughs> you're gonna say this but any, anybody a big fan of the TV show everybody loves Raymond Oh, I love the show because it's funny and it's like a dysfunctional kind of family in my family. It kind of reminds me of me and my brothers interact the way Ray and uh, Robert interact. But uh, Robert, taller, bigger guy, funny guy, police officer, but still kind of intermingled. Well, he was born very early on in, in their marriage and Ray was the baby. He got a lot of more love instead of the first. And so he always had this some things that I struggle with, self-esteem and self-worth, that kind of thing. And so, you know, and he was in this group that was kind of a new age cult kind of thing. All right, well, basically, Ray was like, man, you're weird, don't get out of this, you know, and they're usually their friends and they're, but they're brothers, they're kind of best friends too, they're always being mean, like me and my brothers are my best friends and we couldn't say that we loved one another you know, because you want to be manly and masculine about it. So they just, you know, my best friend, I'd tell him, he, oh, you're short and hairy, you're like a hobbit. Or, you know, he'd say, well, he'd slap me on the face and my oily skin, he'd go, oh, you got baloney skin. Because we just, we beat each other up because we have to be masculine and tough. But Ray got to this point and said, no, you got to get out of this group. And, he, and, and Robert just would go, and he's like, but you're part of me. And then the mom, and Deborah, do you remember? It's like, oh. That's how Jesus feels about you, Betty. About you, Karen, Jacob, Darlene, everybody on this side too, just so I don't have to name everybody. <laughs> He's desperate for us. I can't speak of the people that I walked around and handed out a few of my cards and the, the, the little sticky notes that we have. Out over here, most of them go to a Christian church locally, and some of them don't. And I just said, "Hey, I'm pastor of the local church, and over here, and uh, just want to invite you to church sometime. If you don't have a home church, you know, it, it can be a little scary. You know, you're worried you're going to get cussed out, or you know, people aren't going to answer the door. But God protects and He guides. I had good conversations. There was people that I met came to the rummage sale yesterday." If we're obedient, if we walk in what God tells us to do, just gently, we take baby steps, he will bring fruit from that. We, I believe we're going to have more people in this church. But it's not just about quantity, it's about quality. That's where the holiness, the holy living comes in. I believe I stopped at 30 or 4, but I'm going to move on to the coin. So, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light up a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost coin. 
In the same way, I tell you, there is much rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What we need to do as a church, as a people, as a mindset, is always be thinking of ways that we can reach other people, right? Now, majority of people I talked to yesterday went to a local Christian church here. But maybe one or two people will come and visit. You never know. But it's the one, remember, leaves the 99, goes for the one. Each one, reach one. So I'm not asking this morning for all you to, when you go to the grocery store this week, start preaching to the cash out cashier, okay? All right? Some of you know someone in your life right now that's hurting. Be their friend. Don't preach at them. Don't try to get them saved. Love them. Betty was talking about this in her meditation this morning. Love one. Love people. Go beyond yourself. You know me talking about, I couldn't tell my friend I love him and stuff, you know, because we had to be, we were more concerned about being funny and having fun than, than you know, being masculine, really. But, but loving somebody, humble yourself. There's the hard thing. I still have trouble with it. Humble yourself and tell somebody that you love you haven't talked to them for a long time or haven't been in deep conversation about them. That God loves them because you're a Christian and God loves you and you know that love them and maybe they haven't been in the church for a while. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they're just going through a rough time. They go to some church and they're faithful there. This is the love of God spreads and it goes. What did the, what did the song say? I got too much stuff up here today. The last bridge. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. We are the hands and feet of Christ. We are the church. We're not an organization. We're an organism that Jesus has put in this world to fulfill the Great Commission. And this church is a part of it. We're surviving and we're going to survive. So what our focus needs to be is less inward and more outward. All right? Just loving people. Visit a Hispanic restaurant across the street or another place and just love them. Tip well. All right? If you can't, you can't. But what I'm saying is when you can, do as God leads. You've been put in this world for a purpose and a plan to fulfill it. You're part of the body of Christ. Christ's spirit, God lives in you. And that's great to be accepted for his unending love, but he doesn't want it to stay right there. He wants it to go beyond us. Go for that last coin and rejoice. Go for that last sheep. Go and be the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, help us to love like you love. Help us to be like you are. Help us to reach out. Show us the ways that we can do it financially and what we already have. Give us what we need when we need it to fulfill the calling that you've placed upon our lives. Help us to get out of our own comfort zones that you're okay with, but maybe tradition have kept us out of that. Help us to be all things to all people, not that we have to be perfect, but that we have the spirit or the anointing of Paul to go into all the world and be a tent maker, even though he was a theologian among theologians. He became a tent maker to spread your word to spread your message. Help us to always be with you and walk with you. To quote Keith Green, Father, I want to take your word and spread it all around, but first help me just to live it, Lord. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown. For my glory, my reward, is giving honor and glory to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.